Yes, I'm sure. Uh, hello, everybody, <laughs> and and welcome to to Kangaroo English. Um, I'm Christian, and I hope that you are all well and happy, and I hope that you are all ready to learn some English today. Because um, in today's class, we are going to be talking about uh, vocabulary, okay, a lot of vocabulary. And also, we are going to be talking about how to persuade people, how to convince people to, to do something you want or to, or to think in a similar way to you, um, Persuasion is, is very important in life. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so hello um, hello to everybody who is here um, in class today. Uh, we have uh, people from all over the world. And I am really happy and proud to, to have you all in this class today. So first... To, to warm up to to warm up our neurons let's let's do some some games okay so the first the first thing is um, is just a, a silly a silly cartoon in English okay and it's this one so <laughs> he says hey honey I'm home and then honey says I know <laughs> because She's honey, and he's the home. <laughs> I, I know, it's, it's a stupid joke, but th these are the types of jokes that I like. Stupid jokes. So, yes, you can see that um, in, in English, it's, it's typical to call somebody honey. Honey is a word like... Uh, a, a term of endearment. It's a, a soft word, a caring word. It shows you care about somebody. Honey. <laughs> um, okay, the next one, the next one is a little bit more complicated. Okay, so have a look at this. When you are in Australia and you finish eating at a restaurant... Mm. Okay, so quite difficult when you're in Australia and you finish eating at a restaurant. And then we have a picture of a game of chess. So, what is the answer to this riddle? What is the answer to this question? What sense does it make? Can anybody, can anybody explain when you're in Australia and you finish eating at a restaurant... What is the relationship between this and chess? Who can tell me? Who's, whose neurons are firing today? I can't wait to see if anybody can solve this, this riddle. <laughs> so, yes. Hello to, um, to, to everybody. Mayela, Ariane, Patricia, Katy, Clayton, uh, Kat Katarshina. Katarshina? I think, I think I'm pronouncing this correctly, Katarshina. May, uh, yes, um, Marion, Surendra, Lysia, uh, Anthony, Juro, Vedran, Oleg, Ippolito. Hello to everybody. Um, so what, what is the relation between the chess and, and asking for the bill? Okay. Because... In English, ah, very good, Lysia. Lysia has the answer, okay? So, in English, you can ask for the bill. Okay, you can ask for the bill in the restaurant, but you can also ask for the check. Okay? The check is the bill. Normally, this is in American English, okay? And so... Uh, if you're in Australia and you want the bill, you say, Checkmate! 
checkmate, which is um, the, the the same as in in um, in uh, in in chess in the game of chess, when you kill the king, you say checkmate. You say checkmate. The same thing. Um, uh, yes, the same thing. Uh, yes, yeah, so, um, <laughs> checkmate, very good. Okay, uh, an another, another stupid joke, okay? So, here we have um, the queen and the king. So, the queen says, come to bed. And the king says, no, not until I have a name for my soldiers. And the queen says, okay, night. And the king says, babe, you're a genius. <laughs> because, um, because you can see in this that the queen is using the abbreviation of OK, which is K. So she says, K, K, night. So she's saying, OK. OK, good night. And you know that the, the soldiers of the medieval kings were called knights. So, knight, okay, good night, knight. A stupid joke, a stupid joke. <laughs> uh, okay, but the reason that I'm showing you these is because today we are going to be talking about vocabulary and spelling and persuasion. So, let's begin. So, first, let's do some spelling. I wonder, are you good spellers? Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's see, okay? So, here, I have a list of dun, 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 the demons. Demons are words in English that are very, very common but they are difficult to spell. Normally because phonetically the sound of the word and the spelling is different. Or it is irregular. Okay? Um, <laughs> so, um, the first word. Let's see, let's see if you can spell this word, okay? I want you to, I want you to type, to type in, the, in the box, okay? So... Let me erase this. Okay. Okay. So, um, the first word is February. Okay. So, this is the month of the year, you know, January, February, March, April, May. Who can spell the word February? Time to type. Let's see. Who is a good speller? February. Uh oh. It's not as easy as it sounds, but okay, Katy, Surendra, Patricia, Daria, Hippolito, Lorena, Salem. Mayela, Joshua, Kar you're all correct. Amazing. You you guys are you guys are incredible. Nasir no. Anthony no. But but a majority of you are correct. Incredible. Good work, guys. Okay, so it's February. February. Very good, very good. Okay, okay. Um, uh, okay. The next word is foreign. Foreign. Okay. So this is a word to describe somebody or something that is not from that place. It's foreign from another place, not native, foreign. So, 
Who can spell the word foreign? Ooh, okay, so Patricia, I think this was a, a typo, no? I think you know how to spell this word, but it was a, a typo. Uh, so Mayela, uh, no as well. Uh, Surendra, no, but a majority, yes. Uh, Hippolito, I think, <laughs> I think as well this is maybe some, some spelling, some spelling mistakes. Salim, no, so it's... Now, maybe your English teacher has told you that we have a, a rule in English that it's I before E except after C. But this is an example of how this rule really doesn't work in, in reality because here we have a, an E after the I and there's no C. So, yeah, the rule is... Um, the, the rule is not that good. Okay. So. Foreign. Okay. Um, next word. More, more difficult. Let, let's get more difficult. Who can spell the word accommodation? Accommodation. So this accommodation is uh, a place that you can stay a place you can sleep. Uh, a hotel is accommodation. Uh, if you rent, if you rent an apartment, it's accommodation. Your house is a type of accommodation. If you go camping, your your tent, your tent is your accommodation, where you where you sleep. Okay, come so um, yeah, this one see. A majority of you, the spelling is incorrect. Hippolito, I think you are the first person, Hippolito, who spelt this word correctly. Uh, Amanda as well. Very good, Amanda. Uh, Dennis, yes. The trick, the trick with this word is we have two C's, two M's. Okay. Accommodation, two C's, two M's. Really? Why? Why? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. A little bit more complicated. What about tongue? Who can spell this word without, without looking on Google? Okay, no Googling. Cheaters. <laughs> tongue. Tongue. And also you can you can notice the, the, the horrible pronunciation of this word. At the end, you have to use your tongue to block to block the the, the throat, okay, to block the air, and the air comes out of your nose. Okay, this is a nasal, a nasal sound. Uh, uh. You can feel all of the sound coming out of your nose. So, to say tongue, you need to use your tongue. Wow. Very good, guys. A, a, a majority of you, again, again, you have it correct. Really, really impressive. Well done, guys. Well done. Tongue. So, the pronunciation is not tongue. <laughs> okay. No tongue. Tongue. <laughs> okay, very nice. Um... Okay, what about, let's have another look here, okay. Uh, mm. What about exaggerate? I, I don't want to exaggerate, but my spelling is very good. Is your spelling good? Don't exaggerate, okay, exaggerate. <clears throat> um, once I went fishing and I went fishing I caught a fish and it was this big 
Well, maybe I'm exaggerating. It was this big, but wow. Uh, okay, so yeah, we again, again, this this word. Okay, we have some problems here. We have some problems. I mean, yes, a, a lot of people have the spelling correct. A lot of people know. Okay, so we have one X and two G's. Exaggerate. Uh, and um, <laughs> so who uh, Lysia says that uh, a synonym, a synonym for this would be would be overkill. Great, great word, Lysia. Overkill. Overkill is when you. Um, you do something too much. Spanish, the Spanish are very famous for overkill with food. For example, if you invite five people for dinner, then you make enough food for 20 people. <laughs> this, this, is, this is overkill. When you do something to extremes... <laughs> <laughs> Gennaro says, two G's? Are you exaggerating? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, well, um, actually, I think that, that in general, in general, your spelling is really good. So, I I'm not going to continue with the spelling because I'm, I think it's really good, guys. Um, Igor wants to know, how do you pronounce uh, continuity? That's how you pronounce it, continuity. Because we have, there's a little rule in English, okay? That, uh, if you have a consonant, okay, a consonant and a U, then most of the time, a, a majority of the time, the pronunciation is EU. For example, the famous, the famous Apple product. The pronunciation, because we have consonant, consonant and U, so this is EU. I tunes, not I tunes, I tunes. In British English, okay. In American English, it's tunes. Like, yeah. But in British English, it's you, okay. Um, or another word like this. This is. Uh, uh, it could mean like. Like a little, a little baby dog. A little baby dog is very cute. It's so cute. It's like... Okay. Or it can describe an attractive man or an attractive woman is cute. Okay. So yes, you can see in British English, we say cute. Uh, Americans would say, well, <laughs> depending on the dialect, Americans would say cute as well. Cute. So, yes, consonant plus U, EU. Okay. Okay, um, let's, let's move on to the next um, activity, okay, which is um, we're going to do... Today, I want everybody, I want everybody in this class to learn some new vocabulary, okay? And the, the, the best way to memorize, to remember your new vocabulary is to use it. If you don't use it in a sentence or in a conversation, um, in writing, in an email, if you don't use it, you will not remember it. And probably you have to use it three times or five times or ten times. And then, poof! It will be here forever. Okay. Um, 
So let's learn some new vocabulary. So I want you to use a dictionary, okay? Go, go uh, use an online dictionary. Use a thesaurus, a dictionary of synonyms. Just Google it, okay? We're going to learn some new vocabulary. I want all of you to learn at least one new word today, okay? So, first thing, okay, three words. Three things that spin. Spin. Do you know what this means, to spin? Things that, things that turn around like this. So, tell me, three things that spin. And maybe you have to look in your dictionary for this word. And I really want you to learn some new words today, okay? Exactly, Lena, Le uh, Lenny. If you don't want to lose it, use it. Which is the opposite to exercise, right? Because if you want to lose the fat, you have to use your body. Uh, uh, anyway. Okay, so, um, Katty says, something that spins is a carousel. Very good. Amanda says, a spinning top. Very good. Mayela says, a wheel. Nice. Uh, uh, B-O-T-G, B-O-T-G, toopy. What's a toopy? I don't know what this is. Uh, handle spinner, merry-go-round, a wheel, of course. Yeah, a fidget spinner. Oh, I hate fidget spinners. The earth. Very good, the earth. Uh, a fan. Excellent, a fan. A ball. Um, a motor. <laughs> Amanda, Amanda says that her, her daughter spins around. True. A dancer. Very nice, Percival. Barbaros says electrons. Abstract. Abstract. Francisco says, a gear spins. Very good, very good. <laughs> a Russian's, a Russian's uh, uh, gun. You know, the, the guns with the round? Yeah, okay. A washing machine. Great, great, I love that. A washing machine. Uh, the London Eye. It's true. And Anthony says, a slot machine. Mm. You know, a slot machine, like in Las Vegas, you put in the money and it goes, doo -doo -doo -doo, ding, 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 and then you win a million, a million dollars, woohoo. <laughs> uh, Lucia says the tire, yes, the tire. And Maytham says tongue. <laughs> now, I think that Maytham is talking about the previous spelling of tongue. But it's true, your tongue can go round, round and round, especially when you are French kissing. It goes round and round. <laughs> okay, um, what about this? Children's toys, okay? So three, three children's toys that you would find in a playroom. Hmm. Um, I can think of lots of toys. Mm. Um, can you, can you think of any, any children's toys? What, what are some, what are some typical children's toys in your country? I, I really, I would love for you to tell me. Um, <laughs> De Dennis says that, um, when a when a cat is trying to a cat's trying to get his tail, he goes round and round. <laughs> very true. It's very true. And Kim Kim says that his head is spinning. Great great metaphor. I love this man. Your head is spinning. You're you're confused. There's too much information. Really good. Really good. Okay, so uh, children's toys. Um, uh, a car. A teddy bear. A ball, building blocks, a PlayStation. Very good, yes. Now children have a PlayStation. Uh, a teddy bear. A car. Uh, Lego. Uh, 
lots of people saying Lego. For me, Lego is the, the best toy in the world because you have infinite creativity. Then she says a train set, a babushka. <laughs> I think babushka is the, the dolls, inside the dolls, inside the dolls. No, I think. Um, uh, robots, yeah. <laughs> Lenny says that the best children's toy is noise. It's very true. Children are noisy. Uh, especially now, the, the children here in this school at the moment, oh my God, because school finishes in, in two weeks and the children are crazy. They, they come, there's, they, it's so loud. Whoa. Okay. Uh, yeah, teddy bears, balls, very good. Very good, guys. Balloons, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, okay, let's go. Uh, let's have a look at see. Okay. So, three ways to stay warm in winter. Three ways to stay warm in winter. So remember, we have we have cold and hot. Okay, cold and hot. But in the middle, we have warm. So you're not too hot. You're not too cold. You're just warm. You're just perfect. So, three ways to stay warm in winter. And then beyond hot, we have boiling. Boiling, I'm so hot, I'm boiling. Or beyond cold, freezing. Freezing. <laughs> so, um... Ah, so Alex says babushka is grandmother in Russian and a matreshka is the doll. Okay. See, I learned some new vocabulary today. So, uh, yes, um, lots of people saying how to keep warm. Jogging, alcohol, yes. <laughs> Katarashina says that you should have more fat on your body. <laughs> I like this idea. Uh, a hot chocolate. Yes, a cola cow, if you're Spanish, or hot chocolate. <laughs> At home, exercise. Exercise keeps you warm, exactly. The French Leo, at home with a cup of tea. It's very true. That's very British, a cup of tea. Then she says, next to the fire. Mayela says, to hug, to hug the person you love. Ah. <laughs> Kim says to share your body temperature with your girlfriend. This is a really good way to keep warm, I think. The best way, no. <laughs> Air conditioning, it's true. Thick socks. Mm. You know, a lot of people have problems with cold feet. You know, the, the cold feet makes them feel cold, but personally, I don't have this problem. If I have cold feet, uh, you know, I, um, it doesn't bother me. No problems. Uh, I don't know why. Ula says vodka. Vodka, I think, is the best way to... Vodka and sharing your heat with your girlfriend, this combination. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay. This is the final part of this vocabulary section, okay? So... Three things that need ironing. Three things that need ironing. Mm. What, what is an iron? What is an iron? What is an iron? It's, um, well, iron is... Uh, a type of metal, a specific type of metal. Um, it's ferrous, ferrous metal, iron. Um, and it looks like this. Well, mm 
Well, I mean... <laughs> so, so this is the iron, right? This is the... This is... This is an iron, okay? And this is, see, this is the steam, the psh, the steam. You know, I think, I, I don't think that I'm going to draw any more pictures because, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it looks, it looks ridiculous. Okay, iron. Um, a tie, yes, it's very true, a tie. A, an, a uniform. Your, your hair? <laughs> No, you don't iron your hair. No, you straighten, straighten your hair. Ironing, iron your shirt, your pants. Very good. Um, Katarzyna says that if you can't find fresh socks, then you can iron the dirty ones. Good trick. <laughs> uh, a silk blouse. Very nice. Skirts, jeans. Um, yeah, this, this was, this was, this was meant to be steam, but I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not very good at drawing. Um, yeah, I'm really sorry. Yeah, so, so Katty says that an iron could be electric. <laughs> oh, man. Or, or it could be, yeah, with, with coal. Uh, yeah, it looks, yeah, it looks like a submarine. Um. I don't know how to draw an iron. I need to. I need to practice more. Um, suit, a scarf. Yes. Let let me let me tell you a little secret about about myself. I don't have an iron. And maybe maybe you you can you can tell that I don't have an iron because of my because of my the shirts that I wear, but um. <laughs> I don't like ironing, um, so yeah, it's it's a bad it's a bad. I'm sure it's bad. <laughs> so <laughs> it looks like a bird. Ah, yeah, maybe it does. Maybe it does look like a bird. Okay, I'm not an artist. I'm the worst the worst artist in the <laughs> in the world. Okay, now, so this was the first part of the class. Now the second part of the class. We are going to play a really interesting game, okay? And all of you, all of you people, you are going to be salesmen, okay? You're going to be salespeople. I want you to sell me a product. Okay, now, what, what product are you going to sell me? Well, you have to invent the product. But, I will give you the vocabulary to, to use to invent your product. The characteristics. Okay, so, let me tell you the characteristics of your product. Okay, so, the, the first thing, what, what did I do with my pen? Okay, the first, the first thing that your product must contain is a whip. Okay, so a whip. Your product must contain a whip. What, what's a whip? Yes, a, a whip to, you know, for horses or... Or people depends. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm trying to find some vocabulary that's more, you know, that's more interesting for you. The second thing that your product must contain is a whistle. Mm, whistle. What is a whistle? This is a whistle. What a coincidence that I have a whistle right here. Whistle there. Yeah? Whistle. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next thing is let's have a look for some more. Um, ooh. 
Ooh, I like this. I like this. Uh, okay. The next thing, your product must contain a broom. What is a broom? Hmm. A broom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, chicken or a good sailor, uh, elephant, <laughs> cyclone. <laughs> uh, speaking of horse wheel scrubber. Yeah, sorry, I'm reading your comments. Okay, so. Uh, so one one more thing, okay. Your product must also contain. Your product must also contain a diaper. What is a diaper? <laughs> so, a whip, okay, to to whip people. A whistle, a whistle to to blow, okay. A broom, this is to, to clean your house, yeah, to clean your house. Broom. This is what witches, witches ride on brooms, okay, and a diaper. Exactly, Joshua, an escoba. So a diaper, uh, a diaper is for babies, for babies, for the wee-wee and the poo-poo. The for babies, the the trousers, trousers for babies. <laughs> okay, so your product, you your the product you invent must contain all four of these characteristics. Okay, all four of these characteristics. Okay, um, now the the second part is. Who is the client? Who is going to buy your product? I'm going to select a person at random. Okay. The person who is going to buy your product is an insomniac. Mm. An insomniac. So, an insomniac is a person who can't sleep. It's impossible for them to sleep. Normally, it's a medical problem. Okay? So, um, now you have to invent a product for an insomniac with a whip, a whistle, a broom, and a diaper. Hmm, okay. So, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of some ideas about about my product, what it, what it could be, what it could be. Um, okay, okay, I think, I think I have my idea, my idea. But the question is, how are you going to sell your product to me? Now, before we continue, Tiago, Tiago has a, a really... Um, a really good question. What is the difference between a client and a customer? So, basically, okay, normally, in general, a customer is somebody who buys a product. So, in the supermarket, you have a customer because they buy a product bread or cheese and a client is somebody who buys a service so an accountant has a client or a lawyer has a client so this is the difference okay so in this case because they're buying because they're buying a product from you we would probably call them a customer okay um, yeah so so Now, how how can you how can you persuade somebody? How can you um, convince a person to buy your product? Okay. Well, we are going to use some some special techniques. Okay. So, 
Um, the first thing, the first technique, we're going to, where is my, um, where's my, my number here? Okay, so, um, here we go. So, uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is hypophora, okay? Hypophora is a really, really good and really simple technique to start uh, uh, to start a presentation. So, if I want to present myself to 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 a, to a business or present myself for a job, I can use hypophora. Okay, and basically, this is you ask a question. And then you answer the question. Okay? So, hypophora is ask, answer. And it is a fantastic way. Like, for example, if you are writing for an exam, you can use this to, to open your exam, to start your, your writing. It's really good. So, if I want to sell a product to an insomniac, maybe I will start with this. I can say, do you have trouble sleeping? So I start with the question, do you have trouble sleeping? And then you answer the question, I have the solution. Okay? And so yes, this is this is a typical way to start to sell a product. You're asking the question, right? Do you have trouble sleeping? I have the solution. The solution is my product. So now I can I can think about my my product some more, okay? Um, the next the the next technique, okay, is we're going to talk about um, alliteration. Alliteration is when we repeat sounds, okay? We repeat sounds to create to create a, a poetic effect, okay? Like um, if we want to repeat uh, a, a, a word to, to sell our product, okay? So imagine if our product, my, my product for the insomniac, it's very, um, it's very, what can I say? It's, um, it's, it's good quality. Yeah. I, I want to say that it's, it's a good quality product. So, um, I could say, I could say that it is, um, it's, it's strong. And so now, I, I need to, to think of other vocabulary that has the, the, the similar sound. The st. So, ooh, another word in English which is similar to strong is maybe stable. Okay, so I'm repeating that, that sound. Strong, stable. Um, just <laughs> steady. Steady. And and it creates a kind of a, like a magical effect to to the listener. And by by using these these synonyms, that they're, they're not perfect synonyms, but using words that are similar with alliteration, 
it it really creates a, a kind of poetry to help you to sell a product or to sell yourself. Okay. So uh, now the final technique. Okay, the final technique is um, anaphora. Okay. Whoops. Uh, anaphora or epistrophe. Basically, they, they are very similar. And this technique is about repetition. Because when you're trying to sell something, repetition tells people, okay, that you, that listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Okay? So, for example, um, imagine I want... The, the customer, I want the customer to focus, to focus on the idea that my product is very, um, what could we say, uh, my product is very reliable. Do you know what this word means, reliable? Reliable means it's dependable. It means that I can count on this product every single day. This product is, is, um, is uh, I can trust this product, it's reliable. So with anaphora, I repeat this word at the beginning of every sentence. So, reliable. And maybe, maybe I will do this three or four times. So, I could say, my product is reliable in the mornings, reliable on the weekends, reliable for you, reliable for your family. So, by repeating, by repeating this word at the beginning of the sentence, I am like, you, no, reliable, 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 okay? An epistrophe, epistrophe is the same but the word at the end, okay? So, so imagine if I want, I want to give you the idea that the product is for all of the family. It's not for you, it's for all of the family. I can use the word family at the end of every sentence. For example... This product is convenient for the family. This product is good value for all of the family. This product will bring joy and happiness to your family. And so I'm putting this idea in your mind, family, family, family. Okay? So, now, that was maybe a little bit abstract. But really, it's not abstract. These techniques you can use in exam writing, in job interviews, in, in emails, in conversation, in presentations. So let's, let's, bring, let's bring all of this together to sell our product. Okay, so... Un Unfortunately, I have to draw one more thing, okay, so, okay, so, um, um, so, <laughs> okay, so this, this basic, <laughs> this is the bed, okay, and this, this is the person, this is the person, in bed, okay, and they are an insomniac, an insomniac, okay, so this, this is the diaper, and they, they wear the diaper all the time, they wear the diaper 24 hours a day, okay, <laughs> and
This is this is a a close up of the diaper. It looks it looks something similar to this. Okay, and on on one side it has a whistle. Okay, this is the whistle. Here's the whistle, okay, and then on the other side it has the the whip. <laughs> okay. uh, the whistle, the whip, the diaper, and what was the other word? Oh man, ah, oh, the broom. Yes, and and then at the back, at the back we have the broom. Okay. Okay, uh, what what an amazing product. So 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 basically, basically, um, you you're you're an insomniac. You you can't sleep. You you put this on, okay. And if you sleep, if you start to fall asleep during the day, okay. Imagine it's it's lunchtime. You're feeling tired, okay. You're starting to fall asleep. Then the the whip. The whip goes, whoosh, okay? It, it hits you in the face and it wakes you up. And then maybe you start to fall asleep again. And then the whistle blows. Whoo, and you wake up. And so, <laughs> and so you, you cannot sleep during the day. You can only sleep at night. And this will help you with your insomnia. And this, this at the at the back is if maybe if you have a little accident, you can it clean it cleans it for you. Okay. Now, how can I use my techniques to sell this product? So now it's it's your job. Okay, I'm I'm giving I'm giving the work to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm sorry about I'm sorry about my drawing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about the terrible um the terrible product, okay? But now, how can I sell this product? So, the first thing I I <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it's an incredible product. It's the greatest product ever. <laughs> So, I want you to open the presentation. Okay, I want you to use to use um, uh, hypophora to start with a question and then answer the question to sell this product. Okay, so 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 tell me how how would you how would you open this presentation? What what is the question that you would ask? to a customer. <laughs> yes, Max, it has Wi-Fi, of course. It's a Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi diaper. <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't have Wi-Fi, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> uh, so, so yes, if, um, So yeah, what 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 question would you ask to to open this presentation to sell this for to an insomniac and Bluetooth Bluetooth in the diaper? Okay, well, oh, that's not, Bluetooth is like this. No. Yes, it also has Bluetooth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Max, thank you Max. Max says, "Do you want to be hit by a broom?" <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so so Patricia says, Patricia says, "In France, the the president says, "I will do this and I will do this and I will do this." This is exactly a form of anaphora. This repetition, politicians love to use this. Ah, oh, okay. The French Leo, great. Do you have trouble with sleeping? Very nice. Uh, 
the French Léon again says, Do you want to sleep well? Very nice. Esther wants to know, is it heavy? No. It's car carbon fiber. New, new technology, Na NASA technology. Um, <laughs> Lysia says, well, Lysia's question is, why, why would I buy your product? <laughs> Painkiller says, do you want to sweep your room? Do you want to be a referee? <laughs> Venchi. Venchi says, do <laughs> you guys are so funny. Do you have an ugly woman? You can't sleep because of terror? <laughs> I'm going to solve your problem. <laughs> nice one, Venchi. Nice one. Gennaro, do you want to save your dreams? Do you want to enjoy your dreams? Gamal says, do you want your little brother to whistle in your ears? Tilly says, do you always feel sleepy in the middle of the day? Really good, guys. This is, this is fantastic. I love it. Amanda, do you want to change your life and have a pleasant night? <laughs> Mariam says, do you want to stay awake and come here with a diaper, a whistle, a broom and a whip? <laughs> Okay, great. Now, how how can we use the second technique, okay, which is the repetition? So, I want you to give me some examples of of the repetition, okay? How what what are you going to sell me? What what characteristic are you going to sell? Are you going to talk about um the price? Okay, you're going to say, it's cheap, it's cheap, it's cheap. Or are you going to talk about the quality? The quality, the quality. The... Or are you going to talk about, I don't know, the, the, the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi? You know, I, I, want, I want you to give me some examples with, with this repetition, okay? <laughs> Percival... Percival says that maybe it could be for babysitters that sleep when they should be working. A great idea, Percival. You know, I think I think this product has a big future. Why not? You know, why not? Esther, I love your I love your question, Esther. Do you want to have sweet dreams? Very nice. <laughs> Mayella, are you bored of your husband or wife? Buy this. <laughs> Dimitri, when was the last time you slept well and saw beautiful dreams? Ah, nice. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> Jamari says, eat, surf, sleep. This, this isn't really an aphra or epistrophe. This is more like a type of, um, more like a type of, um, what could we say? Like a try, like a... Like a, this has a name. I think it's called a tricolon. Mm. A tricolon is when you, you know, you have a three-part thing. Huh? Um, okay, so the French Leo says, "I have a reliable product for you, but now you need to, you need to repeat this word, reliable. When is it reliable? It's reliable, reliable. I want a repetition." Okay, so Lysia says only today is half the price. So why don't you repeat half the price? Only today, half the price. For the next 24 hours, half the price. Do you want half the price? Do, are you... Uh, isn't it incredible, this product at half the price? <laughs> so so Mayela says, no more counting sheep. No more counting sheep, no more counting sheep. But you cannot repeat the same complete sentence. Only one word or two words, okay? Mm. Okay, so Amanda says, if you want to sleep well, if you want to have a good rest, 
If you want to have sweet dreams, that is a perfect example of anaphora, okay? This, this repetition of if you want. Really excellent, Amanda. Great work, okay? And as, as Patricia said before, you know, politicians love to use this technique, okay? Um, <laughs> Painkiller says that, Painkiller says that, um, I, you would be the first person to buy this product. It's true. It's very true. Because I don't think it's going to be a popular product. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, listen guys. Um, so, yeah, Gamal. Good work, Gamal. Chill out with my product. Chill out without fear. Chill out. Good. So, so these are techniques that you can practice at home, okay? And, and they are not just something for poetry or literature. They are something that you can use um, all the time. So listen, it's two o'clock. I have to go. But before I go, I want to just remind you of something, okay? I want you to, to tell you something that... Um, your choices should reflect your hopes and not your fears, okay? So, if you are choosing to, to not have conversations in English because you are afraid, or if you are choosing to not, um, you know, talk to people, if you're afraid to, to, um, to, to put yourself out there, if you feel afraid to maybe send emails, afraid to apply for a job, afraid to take the first step, then, you know, you need to change that. Uh, today, I want you to put aside your fears about speaking and, and writing and being part of a community and instead... You know, try to focus on, on what you want in the future. You know, uh, all of the experiences that, that you can have, you know, when you learn a language, when, you know, when you learn English, um, I hope that you choose, you choose to take a risk, to have a conversation, to become part of a Skype group or a Facebook group, um, to, to go out and, and meet some friends. Okay, so so this is what this is what I want for you this week. Okay, I want that your choices reflect the hopes that you have in the future with your English, and not the things that you are afraid of right now. Okay, I have to go, but thank you all for watching. You guys are the best, the best students in the world. You, you make me laugh so much, and I hope that you learned something you know, interesting today. Um, so yes, big love to you all. Um, I'm Christian. This is Kangaroo English. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>